MCCLA. Welcome to the live broadcast of Metropolitan Community Church, Los Angeles. as you are able for our opening hymn, God, you have sent us.
within our heart where we will allow you to be present. We will open ourselves to allow you to fill us to overflowing. And may your presence, your peace, your love and compassion flow freely this morning within this sanctuary, allowing ourselves to truly feel you, to receive you, and to receive your blessing. So I ask this truly and humbly, in the name of our brother, our savior, our Christ, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. Please be seated. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Metropolitan Community Church, Los Angeles. I'm Reverend Dr. Pat Langlois, and on behalf of all of the staff and, and ministry leads of this church, a huge welcome to each and every one of you. I'm a minister, I don't know if I just said a minister of congregational life, so if you want to get something done, come see me, <laughs> and I'll put you to work. <laughs> And we have so much exciting stuff coming up. We had about three weeks of a break, and now the fun begins again. In a few minutes, I'm gonna tell you about some of those ways that you have an opportunity to be involved. But first, I wanna ask, is there anyone visiting here for the first time? So we, if you might raise your hand so we can yeah. welcome you. Please accept this flower and brochure as a way of saying welcome. In the, in the brochure, it'll answer a few questions about us and the card in there, we invite you to fill out and put in the offering plate at offering time. It'll go to our senior pastor, Reverend Dr. Neil Thomas, and he'll be in, he'll be in touch with you, I'll be in touch with you, and we hope that you know who we are by the time the week is out. And besides that, we also extend a, a huge hello to Reverend Neil. He is with uh, MCC in the Valley as they celebrate their anniversary this morning. So, uh, to our sister church. And the welcome pads are going to be coming around if they haven't already. It's the little black book. We invite. Mm -hmm. We have our black books too. Please, please take the time to fill out, if you haven't already, write neatly. If you don't want to write neatly, have your neighbor write neatly for you. Have an attendance person for the row. It doesn't matter. We just want to know you're here. And give us your last name too. Okay, there's not a lot of Lucia's, but there is more than one Carol. <laughs> So please let us know that you've been here. Okay, now for the announcements. In that fabulous threefold green piece of paper that you have, which I don't have in front of me, but you do, it is called our bulletin. You'll see the order of worship on the front. When you open it up, you shall see a whole bunch of things you can get involved in. But I'm going to highlight just a few of those for you. We have coming up today after uh, this service, Azania, our group of people of African descent, will be meeting upstairs in the upper room. Uh, Reverend Barber, would you raise your hand, please? Please see Reverend Barber if you have any questions. But we're joined together for an incredible time of food, fellowship, and fun. On Tuesday night at Colomy, which is uh, one of the um, progressive, uh, uh, queer-affirming uh, synagogues in town, is hosting Jay Mickelson, uh, who is the author of this book, God vs. Gay, The Religious Case for Equality. So he's going to be doing a presentation from 7 to 9, and we invite you to join us over there as we um, take part in, thank you, as uh, we have an opportunity to join with them in, uh, in the dialogue to hear what they have to say. One of the home groups that usually meets that night is going to go as a group over to it. I think that's awesome. So we'll take, a, take advantage of supporting one another and learning what we can to broaden our minds and our hearts. So, those things I told you you can do to get involved and to make a difference, we have a lot of them coming up. I'm going to highlight just a few of them. The uh, food drive is, uh, is going on through the end of the month. Next week, we officially say the end, but we're really going to go through the end of the month. There are people in our, in our community and our congregation who don't always know if they're going to be able to have a meal. We are blessed to be able to have an emergency food bank that people can access anytime they're here. We are blessed to be able to staff 
a uh, food pantry, Hope Net Food Pantry, at our sister congregation, Mount Hollywood UCC, that needs volunteers, by the way. Shameless plug. But we also need food. So this week, when you go do your grocery shopping, I'm going to ask you to take a look and pick up a couple items. Throw it in your grocery cart. Bring it on Sunday. And then we'll be able to distribute it to those in need. If you say, well, what should we get? There's a list of items that are in a special need. So please take the time to look at that. And speaking of feeding, there's another, we like food around here. About five years ago, we started an annual celebration with the uh, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, and straight um, elders who live at Triangle Square in Hollywood. It was the first of its kind low-income housing for, um, for gay and lesbian seniors. And so we decided to start a Thanksgiving feast there. We definitely are in need of donations of food and food items. There is a, um, a sign-up sheet that you can find in the back, but you know. Just in case you don't find it. <laughs> And I'm going to watch. There's lots of opportunities to, to donate items. Um, little to, to you, 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 it, yes? Somebody stole the pen. There's pencils in the pews, just write legibly. That's all I care about. Thank you. Somebody took it. <clears throat> the person who took it, you owe two turkeys. <laughs> If you'd like to purchase a turkey but you have no clue how to cook, that's okay. Other people will cook. So if you can cook, say you can cook and we'll get you a turkey. <laughs> we, we make it easy. And this is a really great opportunity. The, the, the impact on, on the people's lives is, is just profound. After the first one we did, I received a thank you note that said, Reverend Pat, I just want you to thank your congregation and all of those who helped because for the first time we really felt like we were treated like royalty. And so make a difference. Pick up some extra food for that. See Tori, wave your hand, and he can answer any other questions. Okay, just a few more. We have an opportunity to uh, join together on December 1st. Do you know that this is the 30th anniversary of World AIDS Day? 30 years. And indeed, it is World AIDS Day, but did you know where the very first World AIDS Day service was? In MCC San Diego. Reverend David Farrell at the time, who was pastor there, said, we need to get together with God and celebrate, remember, grieve, and be connected with our brothers and sisters who are affected by HIV and AIDS. And so, Following in that long tradition, we're hosting an interfaith service on December 1st here at 7 o'clock. If any of you would like to join us, please do. If any of you would like to participate, please see me. We also have on the 10th, a Christmas miracle is happening. And in one second flat, he needs to be up here. Not you. Him. Oh. <laughs> I need him later. Uh, go ahead. Thank you. Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm so excited. I'm a little nervous, but uh, uh, please bear with me. Um, I just want to get uh, all this information out to you. Um, um, the family we create is, in of itself, a gift that each of us can give to each other. And just as in the gift that God gave us in Jesus, and that is a Christmas miracle. And that is the message behind a Christmas miracle the concert that on December 10th, in conjunction with and support of the new music department, uh, I have been honored to be able to pull together a Christmas concert. When I came to MCC nine years ago, I, I had this dream of pulling together different Christian artists and, and putting a special event together for Christmas. Um, and this Christmas concert is to benefit the Trevor Project, which I'm incredibly passionate about in stopping suicide for young people. And it was just sanctioned by the Trevor Project, and appearing in the concert will be the Reverend Barbara Haynes, Jane and Camille, as together bless our appearing, 
and I'm so lucky for that. And uh, Richard Rocha, Bitter, Bittersweet, Sammy Hancocks, Larry Moe, Susan Horn, Dr. Stefan Scoggins. You're going to meet a young, brilliant man by the name of Gerard Ma Maxwell of Covenant House. We're working with the kids from Covenant House who will also be here to perform. Um, if you don't know, it's a, it's a house where t teen uh, teenage runaways um, are, are housed here in, on Western and Fountain. Um, and there's more surprises to be announced. We've been working very hard on this. I almost don't want to call this a benefit because it's not going to be four hours long, I promise you. Um, and, uh, I, you know, and uh, it's a stage production. It's, it's presented by the MCCLA tribe. And I am hosting. And I just want to ask, with your permission as a congregation and your blessing, I'd like to entertain you. And if you allow me to do so, I promise to put together a great show for you. And um, we have a special guest um, that, uh, that um, an out gay, uh, out and gay comedian and actor, Mr. Jason Stewart, is our opening act. I think that's great. And he, if you don't know him, he's appeared in like 40 movies. He was in Kindergarten Cop. He was in uh, Gia with Angelina Jolie. He's, he's very well known. He's a character actor. And, um, and there's more. So for tickets, please, uh, tickets go on sale tomorrow uh, at goldstar.com. And they're $20, but you can get tickets through us here. MCCLA members can get them for $10. See me, see Danny Garcia, who is co-directing the production um, after church, and we can get you on a list to make sure that you have a spot to see the show December 10th. Thank you so much. Good. get to do the last one, I think. Um, just as a reminder, and I believe we have a slide someplace, but uh, just a reminder that March of 2012 will be 10th, 10th, uh, excuse me, of March, will be the 10th uh, year of ministry of Reverend Neil Thomas here at MCC. And as a congregation, we are going to uh, give him a gala banquet in recognition of his efforts and his talents to this congregation and the community. Um, our teams have already been formed, so if you as a congregation want to get involved and be a part of the planning and the goings of this event, please see myself or any of our team members out in the lobby after services, and we'll be happy to give you information and get you involved. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. We did that one today because Reverend Neal's not here. <laughs> Well, there are a whole bunch more opportunities to get involved. Please uh, do take the time later to go through your bulletin, go to the website, see me. Um, indeed, this is the hands and feet of heart of Christ. Amen? Amen. Now let's turn to one another and welcome each other here today. God's house. Yes. Um, our reading this morning is from Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. I don't think, friends, that I need to deal with the question of when all this is going to happen. You know as well as I that the day of Christ's coming can't be posted on our calendars. Christ won't call ahead and make an appointment any more than a burglar would. About the time everybody's walking around complacently, congratulating each other, we've sure got it made. Now we can take it easy. Suddenly everything will fall apart. It's going to come as suddenly and inescapably as birth pangs to a pregnant woman. But friends, you're not in the dark. So how could you be taken off guard by any of this? You're sons of light, daughters of day. We live under wide open skies and know where we stand. So let's not sleepwalk through life like others. Let's keep our eyes open and be smart. 
Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks be to God. Amen. I was at a MCC worship summit the last couple of days in Houston, and the Reverend Elder Lily Brock gave a, def- a definition of worship that I just wanted to read to you, if you'll bear with me. It says, worship is the submission of all our nature to God. It's the quickening of conscience by God's holiness. It's the nourishment of, of the mind with God's truth and the purifying of the imagination by God's beauty. It's the opening of the heart to God's love and the surrender of will to God's purpose. All of this gathered up in adoration, the most selfless emotion of which our nature is capable of. So the choir is going to sing a a, a song called In the Sanctuary. We've done it in the past a few times. So I just want to invite you. um, We don't have PowerPoint slides up, but we want to invite you to sing along with us. You might hear me yelling out words. So sing those. (laughs) Stand, (laughs) Stand as you're able. And let's just worship God today. Amen.
our stuff. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. And if not, God better be. Amen. Hallelujah. God indeed is in this sanctuary, allowing that presence of the Spirit to be with us, allowing ourselves to just be here now. Let's continue to open our hearts and our minds and our souls so that indeed may the word be shared, be of yours, your wisdom and your love. So blessings upon the words given and the words received. I ask this in the beloved name of Jesus. Amen. amen. And amen. It is so good to be in God's house. Amen. It is so good to be in God's house. Yes. I don't know about y'all, but there are sometimes some weeks that are better than others. Amen? Amen. I'm not going to ask a show of hands, but I know some people in here have had great weeks, and some people here would like to erase them from the calendar. <laughs> Push delete on your computer. Amen? Amen. Extra delete. <laughs> I've had some of those days. <clears throat> you know, last week I, um, <clears throat> last week was one. You know, there have been times when I've come to church, and, and uh, I actually, last week was the change of the time, oh, and yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I've been having sleep problems, <laughs> so I just thought, oh, I'll take something, make sure I go to sleep. <laughs> Slept right through that alarm, <laughs> texted oh. Reverend me, oh, yeah. anyway, I showed up just in time for the 11 o'clock to start. It was my way of getting out of being a participant, I guess. <laughs> and I'm, you know what? I don't think I did that. I think God did. Amen. You know why? Because when I came in, I was like this. I knew I needed to be here, to hear the word, to be in fellowship. But I'm like, I'm not letting you in. I am not letting you in, God. And then when it came, and it was great message, and it was great fellowship, and then when communion came around and Ms. Dawn got up to consecrate communion, <laughs> and it wasn't her, it was me, because what happened was at that moment of human vulnerability and connection was a conduit for myself of allowing myself to open up and to be connected with all that was around me, if that makes sense. You know, sometimes when we go through life and life is tough, it's very easy to become a turtle, to pull ourselves in, just try to get me, just try to get me, right? I can even roll on my back and you still can't get me because I got a hard shell on my tummy. You're not going to get me. But when we start to have the opportunity to connect, somebody said once that the place we really connect is on the level of pain and suffering, that when I can understand your suffering, then I am connected with my own. And it is those points when we're going through the challenges of our lives that we have the opportunity to find God. You know, it says here, we don't, in Scripture, we don't know when God's going to come. God is going to come like a thief. Hallelujah, because God is going to come and take me by surprise. Because it's in those times when we're a turtle in our shell. And God comes in and goes, <laughs> I'm taking you out of that shell. Just try to hide from me. <laughs> Amen. It is oftentimes in those times of suffering, in those times of pain, that we are able to, A, connect with one another, and if we allow it to happen, connect with God as well as ourselves. Amen? God is here. Jesus is here. Now what? Amen? Because in the times that we're in our shells or we're out there dancing and giving glory to God and singing our praises off-key like I do, 
When they give me the microphone, they say, turn it off when we're singing. So I wanted to get into singing one of those songs. And if any of you seen me going like this diligently, I'm like, oh God, this better be off because I want to sing. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right. God needs us joyful noisers and God needs the choir. Amen. <laughs> But it's at those times when there is brokenness in our lives that we can find our way back to God in a way that we never knew existed. And I don't know about y'all, but looking at the world lately, the last number of years, I don't know about you, but it just seems so heavy. How many in, in here have felt at one point or another or currently that we are helpless in the midst of the pain and suffering of the world? You know, and it just keeps getting to be more of a mess and more of a mess and more of a mess. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, there's times I've just given up and said, well, I'm just going to do what I'm going to do because I can't change the world. But you know what? That's stinking thinking. Because I can change the world. You can change the world. You can change the world. We can all change the world when we change our world. Amen? When we change our lives. We have just changed the world. When we change our lives, we change the world. Amen? And oftentimes you will never know that you did it. Don't ever underestimate yourself. Don't ever underestimate yourself. You can be in the worst place ever in your life right now and you can still change the world for the better. Just by being you, being authentically you, being in the presence of God in all things and at all times. Amen? Amen? And so it is with the world, I believe, right now. Do you know that, you know, in, in the midst of all kind of this hopeless feelings, you know, that I don't know about you, but yeah, I'm probably not the only one who's got credit card debt, right? How many of you felt, I'm going to have to work five jobs to pay this off by the time I die? God forbid when our daughter grows up and goes off to college, I'm going to go, you know, I mean, it's like, how are we to survive, right? Well, we can survive by loving God, loving ourselves, and just needing what we need and not getting greedy. Friends, I'm here to tell you, a lot of us have been sold a bill of goods, I know some of us in here, our goal has been to get the best education so we can get the best job, so we can get the best paycheck, so we can buy the best things. Amen? Nothing wrong with nice things. I like shiny objects. I need a diamond on here, but... <laughs> We often strive to have the most goodies. But isn't it interesting? I know a lot of people have said that when they've gone into impoverished areas, it's been report when Reverend Neal spoke a couple weeks ago about going to Tijuana to the hospice that we, are, we help to support people with less than nothing still kept the spirit of life, still had the spirit of love, still loved God. And you know, sometimes when we strive for the goodies in life, the material goodies in life, we forget and we separate ourselves more and more and more from what really matters. Amen? You know, I, was, I had read this book some time ago, and it said that, you know, really in our life, we have turned consumerism into our God. Right? And it is time to say, turn the channel off. Amen? Turn the TV off. Turn it off. Turn the ads off. You'll be happier. I know about y'all, but do you ever notice that people around L.A. don't smile a whole lot? Really? We, we went out. <laughs> you're going to love this. So we, we went to tar Target the other day. I'm going to say Target. We went to Target the other day. <laughs> My, my wife and daughter, four-year-old. And before we went in, Steph said, okay, 
First one who sees somebody smiles gets a dollar. <laughs> I'm like, okay, now that's a way to get Maya interested in what we're doing, but okay. <laughs> Stay calm. <laughs> Do you know we were in that store for an hour before somebody smiled? And do you know who it was? It was somebody who stereotypically looked like they were in a much lower income than we were. Who just got tickled pink that little Miss Muffet Maya, it was, we were, because when we go to the store, you know, the, the carts are race cars for us. So, you know, we were race carring it down the, you, and they just busted out laughing, and the little two-year-old who was in the cart came out, and, 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 and Maya got out of the cart, and they wanted to give each other a hug. She didn't get her dollar, but <laughs> we bought her a book for a dollar. <laughs> but what, what has happened that we have become so separated where we don't even want to offer the smile of love to one another in a supermarket? Amen? Right? You know, and, and, and currently what we have been seeing the Occupy movement going on. And isn't it interesting that the press has been like, woohoo, when other countries have been having these movements, but we don't hear quite as much when it's happening in our country. <laughs> Ooh, did I say that? <laughs> and they're really cool. I'm going to tell you what I find is a, a couple cool things about it. Where, whatever, whatever is agreed or not agreed on on, 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 on some of it. These are people like you and me who are attempting to reconnect. There is, I believe, and I've said this for a long time, that we are on the cusp of a spiritual revolution. When for all of the reasons we have become a disconnected world, primarily because of money, primarily because of the consumerism God, primarily because I want more than you and we destroy people to get it, I believe. That there are people who are saying enough is enough and I want to get connected with my brother and sister and I want to matter again. Amen? And when I read through what people want, when I see the lists, what I see is people wanting to live a path of Jesus. I do. Because there is this deep desire to reconnect. There is this deep desire to care and to have other people care about us. There is this deep desire to physically put oneself somewhere that says, you matter, I matter, and somehow, some way, we don't know what's going to happen, but we're going to make shift happen. You know, when the Berlin Wall came down, my partner at the time was in the Air Force and worked in the satellite section, so she knew what was happening before it happened. And we talked about that afterwards. And I said, did any of you know who was behind this? And she said, nobody in the intelligence community knew that the Berlin Wall was going to be coming down because it was the people. Because the people said there will no longer be a barrier between myself and my family. There will no longer be a barrier between myself and the rest of the world. And I believe what is happening with this Occupy movement is a reawakening of what I know that we believe here in this church. But the thing that interestingly is missing from those conversations is the Christian church. And friends, if this is stuff we've been preaching and teaching, there's two things that I think we are being called to do. Whether or not one goes to the movement, whatever. But to start taking this discussion of reconnection seriously, of taking the discussion of how can I help you and how can you help me seriously. You know, uh, um, our Sebastian, uh, who does all of the web and multimedia and such, as many of you know, went through a very recent painful, painful, painful sh shoulder surgery. And at our staff meeting this week, we do check-ins, and he was talking about how, you know, how he was physically doing. But then he said, I am so grateful. And we went, huh? He said, I am so grateful because I had health insurance. 
I am so grateful because there are other people who hurt worse than me, emotionally and physically. I was like, It's that type of consciousness for us to really keep in mind that does not in any way undermine his pain or his situation, but to always remain connected to the other when we are in the midst of this. I've also often thought and said that one of the great things Jesus came to do when Jesus came to earth was to reconnect, right? Came to reconnect people to their religion, to their God, to themselves, to the communities. He challenged people to go beyond their comfort zone, to reach out to groups that were otherwise ostracized. He touched the lepers. He healed the lepers. He ate with tax collectors. He hung out with prostitutes, right? And some rich folk thrown in there in between. He journeyed in the real world. Amen? And it was all good. How many of us were raised with an attitude of don't fight City Hall? I remember, I remember my dad talking about that. I said, well, you didn't say anything about the state capitol. <laughs> right? Hee, hee, hee. My folks so did not know what to do with me for so long. (laughs) This is a complete tangent. (laughs) But my mom, poor thing, (laughs) poor thing. We were talking one day, this is years ago, and she said, oh, so I saw your your Aunt Gladys. I said, oh, how's she doing? Oh, fine, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, she called me and she said, "Um, I saw Patty. That's none of you call me that. I saw your daughter (laughs) on TV. I said, oh, really? What was I doing? She said, Aunt Gladys said, well, she was speaking at some (laughs) gay mom. Yeah. Some gay thing. It was the parade. I said, oh, really? What did you say to her? Oh, come on, Mom, you didn't say how fabulously proud you were of your daughter that she was making a difference. (laughs) So she says to me, how's the dog? (laughs) You You can fight City Hall. How many of us have heard, don't rock the boat? Mm Mm-hmm. I'm only one. What can I do? Problem was way too big. What can I do? Well, honey, I want you to think of Jesus. He took City Hall and the synagogues on, and he turned the tables when he found injustice. Amen? And what about this don't rock the boat? Well, honey, when the boat was rocking, he, rocking, he started walking. Amen? When the boat was rocking, he just said, oh, silly things that you are, still the boat. And then when it was rocking at other times, he got out and walked on water. Amen? So when the boat is rocking, you get walking. Amen? Jesus was only one person, but look at what he did. And he said that his followers were going to go forth and do greater things. We're just a small group. Yeah, well, look what 12 people did who followed Jesus. Look at what 12 people did who went to Troy Perry's house for the first time 44 years ago. Amen? Don't underestimate yourself. Don't underestimate God. I want us to remember what being a Christian is all about, caring, compassion, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, setting the prisoners free, and the list goes on and on. Do you know that when you go to the store and you see this week that there might be a couple extra cans of tuna fish that you can pick up and bring to this altar next week, do you know that you are truly doing a spiritual act? That is an act of spiritual discipline. It is. 
Because when we do things like that, we're not doing this for something feel good. We do these things because it is a mandate from God. It is a mandate from God. Many of you know Micah 6, 8. Here's, here is a different translation than what some might be used to. But it says it's quite simple. What does God want? Do what is fair and just to your neighbor. Be compassionate and loyal in your love. And don't take yourself seriously. But take God very seriously. And then, how many of you know what happened in Luke? One of the first things that Jesus read basically started his public ministry. Luke 4, 17 through 19. He went into a synagogue and he took the Torah and he unrolled it. And what did he say? He read from Isaiah and he said, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because I have been anointed to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to get the oppressed, to set the oppressed free, and to proclaim the year of God is now. Amen? And I often have read this, spoken on it, taught on this passage of basically the metaphysical aspects of this. In other words, how indeed we are oftentimes blinded. We are blinded by things that have happened in our lives and we can't see beyond ourselves. Many of us have been oppressed really oppressed in schools and churches and our families. Some of us are prisoners of our past. All of these are true. But you know what? Why is it that one of the up-and-coming income businesses of the United States is building jails to put more prisoners in? Usually, it is often called low-income housing for men of color. That is not right. There are prisoners that need to be set free and a prison system that needs to be overhauled. There needs to be a look and to see what causes people to do violent acts, to do crimes, to figure out how can those be, be interrupted so that doesn't even happen in the first place. Amen? Maybe if we took the time to go to where we need to go to teach the children how to read. I have a dream that this church someday is going to start a literacy program because I know that there are students and students who need a chance of an adult that goes to them and takes time and sits with them and teaches them how to read. Amen? To read. Something so simple. I, I have had that vision for years. I want to see a literacy program listed under the programs that I have to be responsible for. Because when we teach a child to read, they can read hope. They can even read the word. And they can be the word. Set the prisoners free. Proclaim good news to the poor. Get that food in here on Sunday. Find out why some people are out of jobs. Support people who have lost jobs. This church has done a great, 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 great ability to do that. Many people in here have lost jobs over the last number of years. Be there for those who need you and vice versa. The fact that right now there are more women and children living under the poverty line is disgusting to me. Disgusting to me. No, we can't overhaul a complete system, but we can start with the community around us. I don't have an answer, but I know that it is within our hearts to do something. Because doing nothing ain't going to have any of, it, any of it happen. But allowing ourselves to be present, be in the word, centered in Christ, following the teachings of Jesus, I know, I know will enable us to help those who are poor. Recovery of sight for the blind. 
create a system where people don't have to make hard decisions about whether or not to go to the doctor. I have been in those situations in my life. I have, and I know others in here have. How can we make an opportunity so that no one has to be blinded to bring healing, to bring healing, to bring health care to the blind? Amen? And this is not a political sermon. Let me make this clear. This is not about a political sermon. This is about how can we get to the fundamentals of what Jesus taught us so we can continue to go do it. Because, you know, Jesus is coming. Jesus is here. Now what are we going to do? Amen? I love this one. I was going to call it this. Jesus is coming. Now now act busy. (laughs) But I'm like, oh, that is so sacrilegious. I can't. I want, to, I want to come to a close with this. The Occupy movement, again, re, re, um, revisiting that for a second. I've been, I've been praying about this and thinking about this, and you know what came to me? I, I really kind of like this, not for, ju- not for all the social reasons, but I realize I want an Occupy movement here. And there is. A lot of us are involved in it. Tim Hain is, has organized a march that's happening in West Hollywood on December 2nd. More information with that on the website, et cetera, et cetera. Three? December 3rd? December 3rd, I'm sorry. December 3rd, Saturday, whatever the Saturday is. 10 o'clock, Plummer Park. But I want us to really claim Occupy. And I don't want us to claim Occupy LA or Occupy West Hollywood or Occupy a city. I would like us to begin to think of it this way. Occupy me. God, occupy me. Amen. Amen. God, occupy me. God, occupy me. This moment and every moment of my life occupy every fiber of my being. When I am in pain, occupy me. When I am in celebration, occupy me. When I am feeling down, occupy me. When I want to give up, occupy me. When I don't want to live anymore, occupy me. Occupy me when I, when I see despair, occupy me. Occupy me, God, like you've never occupied me before. Amen? These scriptures, these scriptures are not history books. These scriptures are the wisdom of God given to us this day to live it out, to make a difference. And I'm going to tell you, I've never been more proud of this church than I have in the last few months. You know, watching Reverend Neil go in the direction that he's going right now and seeing, seeing what, what's, what's happening and bubbling up, I have never been more proud to be a part of this church than I have in the last nine years than now. Because... Because I see what we have been doing internally is growing and saying, it don't matter that we're, a lot of us here are queer Christians, big deal, we are Christians. Amen? We are Christians who are committed to bringing the love of God to the world every way we can. I did say I was going to come to a close. I had a moment, I'm sorry. Hallelujah. Mm Mm-hmm. Occupy, occupy. There's a song in there, Sebastian. I need you to write it. (laughs) Occupy. It was awesome. Lucia, Pastor Lucia Chappelle, Minister of Social Justice, brought to the Interfaith Clergy Group a video, a brief video, too long to show here, but I encourage you to Google it and find it. But Rachel Maddow did an interview with Bishop... Jean Robinson of the Episcopal Church. 
Now, Bishop Gene Robinson, as you may or may not know, is the one who was there was, was a ton of controversy over because, well, he was married to a man. Gay, if you didn't hear that. <laughs> But he, he spoke on this show, and he talked about the fact that he had gone down to Occupy New York that previous week. He was asked about it, and he, and, and, and he said, part of what a bishop does is look for God. Look for God at work in the world. And I think I saw God at work in Zuccotti Park. It's astounding to me that the feeling I came away with is the grieving loss over the loss of community that I think it represents. It seems to be about the dollars and the figures are terrible, you know, how wealth has been concentrated with a few. But the emotional content of it to me This is the important part. Seems like people are mourning the fact that we've become a society that is about every man, woman, or child for themselves and not a society in which we actually do care for one another. There's nothing political in that statement. I was astounded. My breath was taken away. I'm like, oh my God, a prophet on this issue. This wasn't about who's in power. It wasn't about even the corporations where they're making billions and billions of dollars. It wasn't about any of that. But what he saw is what I know we have become. And I believe he, as well as you and me, are calling ourselves to talk about this and to do something about it in our lives. Do you think, Rachel asked, um, that people are out there so that they can find each other, or do you think it's something about demonstrating with your physical presence in the rest of the world? He says, well, what he sees it, part of it is, is that people want to get reconnected, and that my well-being is dependent on your well-being. I don't want to live in a country where every man, woman, and child is for themselves. That's an awful existence, and I think the cries of pain we hear from the movement are the cries from the loss of that kind of community. It is easy as a vanguard church, especially as the founding church of a movement, to become complacent. Just on the gay issue, you know, what else do we have to achieve? We have a lot to achieve because we are the prophetic voice right here, right now. We have been prophetic about bringing people into the fold, about who they love, and now we are prophetic about caring. I'm going to challenge us this week and the coming weeks Go back to your scripture. Read Micah 6, 8. Read Luke 4, 17 through 18. Read the Lord's Prayer. Read Jesus' temptation in the wilderness before he began his ministry. Read the Beatitudes. And friends, once you've done that, you will be reading about who is Jesus you will relight within your heart the passion that has been put there. And you will follow God like you've never followed God before. And some of us might not go ever go down to the movement. But I'm going to guarantee that not everyone here knows the name of your neighbor. And if you know the name of this neighbor, you might not know the name of that neighbor. Here's your homework assignment. Read those scriptures and go make sure you know the name of all of your neighbors because when you do, you have begun community again. You have begun occupying the world with God. Amen? Amen.
Before I say what I have to say, um, for Maya, I can't believe you stiffed her out of that dollar. <laughs> I'm glad you took it because I wouldn't want to have to call you Reverend Patty for the rest of it. You know, last, last Wednesday, I had an appointment in West LA, and I'm taking public transportation these days, and it's really cool because there's this bus that goes right from my house, right to right in front of where I was going. And this was, uh, I was going to see somebody that I really like, so I, I kind of got dressed up, and I put on my six-inch heels, and I was looking really sharp, and, and I got on the bus, and I was feeling good and I was headed and we got up to like Westwood and turned left on Westwood Boulevard and suddenly the bus came to a stop. And they said, out, everybody out. There's these stupid demonstrators that have all of Westwood closed down. The buses aren't running. You're gonna have to walk for the rest to, till you get to your appointment, which was over a mile. And by the time you walked all the way around the demonstration, the Occupy LA demonstration, it was two miles. And these shoes were not walking shoes, folks. These were not walking shoes. <laughs> and you know what? I didn't walk those two miles. I danced those two miles, most of it barefoot. But it was the coolest thing that I had ever seen. 
all of these wonderful young people taking me back to my youth that were peacefully demonstrating, that were peacefully standing up for what's right. And you know, I sat there and I watched them and talked to them as I was walking and dancing through to my appointment. And, and, you know, and I said, how can we get involved? You know, I mean, I'm too old to go sleep in a tent by City Hall. I'm hardly too old to sleep in a bed, but that's a whole other story. So um, anyway, and they said, just get involved. Just tell people, spread the word. And that's what we have an opportunity to do by being part of this church. We have an opportunity to occupy a space, a space of peace and understanding, a, 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 a place or a space where people are equal, where people can be authentic, where people can be who they need to be. And the way you do that, the way you get involved and ensure that space is always there is you give to this church, that you give your time, talent, and treasure, and that's what I'm asking you to do. Please pray with me. God, thank you for this offering, I pray blessings upon it. I pray that it be used at your direction. God, I pray that you wrap your arms around those people that are occupying Los Angeles and occupying Wall Street and occupying all those places, that you protect them and keep them safe from those that want to do them harm so that one day the world will know the 99% will become the 100%. We will all become one. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Will you welcome Reverend Barbara Hayes as she comes to sing for us today? It's so good to be loved. So good to be loved. We've gone through so much, and we're going through Reverend Pat still today. Lots of stuff. You can't talk to your friends without someone telling you they are going to the hospital or just coming out of the hospital. Or somebody been on a job for 20 and 30 years, thought they had it made, ready for their retirement, and they find a way to release them. It's very difficult. And they ask, what am I going to do? I have found the answer, y'all. I found the answer. I found the answer. I learned to pray with faith to guide me. I was walking in the darkness. Church, I could not find my way. Then a light came shining. Hallelujah. Leading me from despair. And all my sins forgiven.
to say, can you find yourself in a, an attitude of prayer? It's really to start communion with prayer isn't basing our happiness on what we don't have. We base our happiness on what we have. So as we open our, our hearts to prayer, I just ask that you lift yourself to God. That you lift your hearts open to those around you, those physically around you, those spiritually around you, that you open your hearts to them and honor them, praying that they have all they need. And as you open your heart, that you open it to your community, that you would know your neighbors and that you would pray that they have all they need. That we would look at other countries that we would see our world without borders, that we would see our world as a place of love. And when it doesn't have that, we would pray that we have what we need. And as we hold those that might do us harm, those that might oppress us, the percentage that lives in fear, basing their happiness on what they don't have, trying to hold on to things, but we would open our hearts and pray that they have all they need. So as we open our hearts to prayer and we bless ourselves, as we look to ourselves, the ones it's often most hard to pray for, that we look to ourselves and pray that we have all we need. And when we don't have all we need, that we're able to know the difference between want and need that we're able to accept help with as much cheer as we want to give it, that we would not live independently, but that we would live in community, giving and receiving, forgiving, loving. And when we're angry, and there are times, there are seasons of anger, seasons of mourning, that we're able to live it, move past it, and not leave anger and hurt, but leave the mark of love 
that when we overturn our tables, it's for the right reasons. We do it as community. And we pray that as our hearts are open, that we are open to this table and this meal, that all things, all people right now would have what they need. And we pray this in the name of all that is holy, the name of our teacher here, the one that guides us, has given us instructions on how to provide ourselves and others all we need. Amen. Amen. It was on the opportunity of the very last time he would be with his family, his chosen family, his friends, his disciples, that he took that opportunity to remind them and through them us that we are connected to everyone, the one percent too. Yes. Those people in the countries where they may have nothing, people in countries that may not like us very much, we are still connected. On that night that he knew would be his last and that he also knew he was connected to the man who would ultimately betray him, he used a simple meal, bread, which is all around the world, to symbolize something we all have in common, the need to eat. He took the bread, he raised it, blessed it, gave thanks for it, and he broke it, saying, this is my body, which will be broken for you. As often as you eat of this bread, remember me, remember my life, remember what I asked you to do. Remember me. And in that gathering, when Jesus lifted the cup and said, this is the cup of the new covenant, that new covenant was to include all people, that all people would have access to the love of God. So as we lift up this cup and pray that however God is, the one thing God is, is love. And in this new covenant, we open it that the communities around us, all people would have access to love and that we would always try to be a source. And in that, we are living the life that Jesus has taught. So as he blessed the cup, as he blessed the cup and offered it to his disciples, he said, remember this. Whenever you drink of this, the fruit of the vine, remember me, what I've taught you, and what I ask you to live. Loving God, as we take in this meal, as we have shared the bread and the cup, we ask that you transform it to what each person here needs. For those who might be at home watching us on the web, that if you partake in a meal, that that would be transformative to you as well, that as you take this in, that it would be a reminder of the love and grace that Jesus has brought to all people, the teachings he has given to us, and the teachings we pray, we know, and understand, and follow. Amen. Amen. It's with great pride I get to say this. At MCC Los Angeles and MCCs around the world, we offer and serve what is known as an open communion. That means you do not have to be a member of this church or of any Christian religion, denomination, yes. Yes. to partake in this meal. You see, we offer no barriers whatsoever. If you choose to partake of communion, you, ushers will be directed, you will be directed by ushers to come to serving stations around the church where the person will, the server will take the elements, take the bread, dip it in non-alcoholic grape juice, again, no barriers, and will place it on your tongue with a brief prayer of blessing. If you would like to take the elements yourself, you may do that. Take that, take it, put it on your tongue, and you'll get a blessing. If you would just like to have the blessing without the elements, that's available. Just tell your server. And because we are aware that so many people have suffered violence and separation through religion, and you might wish to take communion just between you and your God, yes. 
we have that set up for you too. There will be consecrated elements to the alcove to your right, my left, set up so that at any time you may go over there and partake just between you and God. You see, we want no barriers here for you. Also, if you choose to remain in your seat, don't worry about that. God will find you, whether you're here or on the internet. God's already there. All we ask is that you obey the instructions of the ushers. Will the ushers and acolytes now please come forward?
God is in the house, amen. God is in the house. God occupy me. 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 Occupy me. Amen. Amen. Woo! Woo! Ha! Ay, ay, ay. Okay. All right. I'm sweating. We're all sweating. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. All right, folks. Well, I think we've been fed, and it's about time to go out and share the banquet. Amen. <laughs> all right, now. May we give thanks that we have been in community, and may we give thanks to be that community to the world. So let's continue to stand on our feet and praise God some more. Amen. Did that was that was that the definition of worship for you today? All right. All right now. <laughs> There's another reason why I believe we are called to do what we are called to do. And it's for the next generation. Yes, 
it is for the next generation. May all of the children in the world, young and old, may we all receive the blessings of our God, Creator Christ, and go forth and bring that to life. I ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I want to thank you for worshipping with us today. MCCLA, as you can tell, is a radically progressive, inclusive community of Christian faith. And I'm so glad that you were able to tune in with us today. We broadcast our services every Sunday, and I sincerely hope that you'll want to come back and worship with us, or perhaps join in some of our other online activities that we get to do here, live on the internet. I want to also invite you, if you would like to help us to extend our services, to donate to this ministry so that we can reach even more people. And you can do that by just clicking on the Donate donate Now sign that is on your screen right at this very moment. Again, I'm so glad that you were able to worship with us today. And we want you to know that God loves you just where you are and just who you are. Thank you again. And I do look forward to welcoming you back to worship either next Sunday or perhaps at another time that we get to meet via the internet. If you'd like to know more about this local church or other churches like us, why don't you email me now at revneal at mccla.org. That's revneal at mccla.org. I'm going to pray that God will continue to bless your day. And thanks for stopping by.